Got to give it a second. Uh-huh. All right, my friend. I think we're good to go. Okay. So what do you want to talk about? Well, first off, Angel, <laughs> super badass mofo over here. Uh, introduce yourself. Um, so I'm Angel, and I'm a master electrician. I've been an electrician for like 13 years. 13, 14 years. Yeah. Th oh, yeah, 14 years. Um, no, no, been an electrician 14 years, but master a year. Um, started my company, like, back in 2011 as an electrical researcher. Like, I'm trying to do power generation and stuff. But um, I worked with some masters who didn't really want to go my direction. So I was like, well, I got to become a master so I can pull my own permits and do what I want to do. So I did that. Um, I am a union electrician um, with... Um, I, I was apprenticeship out of Local 26 in Washington, D.C. And so right now, I'm just trying to learn as much as I can. I teach code. I love code. I live and breathe code. Um, and uh, at the same time, trying to get patents and trying to, like, develop um, alternative power generation stuff and, and staying up, like, almost every other night on discord app like <laughs> talking to, <laughs> I that, got is you just, that is it's just because there's so many people from different places and like you know if you can't respond if you're if i'm awake you know and i'm like oh i see a question and i can answer it and if you like you or or, or, or that can't answer it i'm like oh, i'll answer it and so it's yeah. just like so that's kind of like an addiction right there <laughs> yeah so any of you that don't know what she's talking about uh i started a discord server and i'm trying to put as many like teachers and students into it so it's like an, a real-time environment where you can it's kind of like mixing instagram and a forum and like facebook all of it yeah. together we can share pictures and ask right. about things i think we've got like code discussion stuff you're a moderator of it so you just created yeah. like an electrical contracting uh, yes, I did, because everybody was asking about it, and I was like, this sounds like we need to do it, and I was so happy that it was yeah. easy to do, <laughs> so yeah. that, I like that, so. Yeah, so uh, what do you what do you like about it, and what do you not like about it so far, the Discord thing? Um, well, it's the same thing, the real time, because, like, if I crash, or I go to sleep, and then I wake up, Oh man, I didn't miss like a whole conversation. <laughs> Fifty messages, yeah, and then you got to catch back up. Yeah, yeah, but it's I do like that. It usually, at least on my end, when I do the Discord app, it'll put me back where I was, and then I could start reading through, and then I kind of catch up in a few minutes and stuff. So I do like that because there's some apps that don't do anything. Uh, you know, you're trying to figure out what's there. Um, I get all the notifications. Um, and stuff. Um, I actually, I'm on two other Discord groups now. Um, yeah, cool. And, yeah, so the one I sent today, it was math. So the math Discord uh, group, there's one. Um, and then uh, it's kind of separate. Lawrence Berkeley, uh, it's a, a telecom company. They have a really, really good um, app. It's like low voltage and security systems and stuff. So that's another okay. good. But they're on Discord, so. That's really cool. Yeah, my kid showed it to me. And, like, he's a gamer, so... It was a, for him. It was a way for him and his buddies to just sit and play games and right. talk to each other. So there's like six of them on talking to each other at the same time. Yeah. And I was like, "Whoa, that's really cool!" And he doesn't really know anything about it, but sometimes they'll listen to music from YouTube while they're playing games and stuff. And I was just like, "Man, I think there's something there. I think there's like a way to build a community." And it's it is the only other thing that's kind of like it, but is like bulky is like live stream. Yeah. And that's to me. I, I looked at no. <laughs> that's well, just and too... do they have a live stream where it can be several people talking at the same time, like in no. that house it's party still... or something? I thought it was still chat mode and stuff. Like I don't know if I don't know. audio. Yeah, the ones that okay. I've been on, it's you. It's live and you can chat and stuff. But I don't know if I've ever seen it where you, with the audio and the video live. So yeah. So the thing that I haven't delved into too much in our Discord server is doing voice chats. Like I've voice chatted with certain people that are in the group, uh -huh. and it's like instead of giving them my phone number, so many people ask for my phone number to call me, and I'm like, just get at me through Discord. We can sit and open up a chat between the two of us. Or oh, I like uh, that. Yeah. Yeah. And so one of the things I thought about doing is like I don't know, maybe one day we pick like code discussion day, and then oh, have we do. you. Yeah, and like have a, have a couple of people just on there talking, and then everybody else gets to listen, but they don't get to speak. So you can pick who gets to speak and have several people talking or not. So it's kind of like a live podcast that everybody gets to listen to, but you create a channel just for voice only. 
Yeah, because so. your code definitions and stuff, that's like a good one. So <laughs> yeah, having everybody come on and say, okay, we're talking about the definitions and going through that. And um, so, yeah, because when you start going through that, like what was today? It's the 408.36, the panel board. Yeah. That was a good time to for everybody to chat to say, okay, look at this code or look, I just sent you this yeah. picture. So, yeah. Yeah, and I'm so finding there's – there's certain times too when people are like really active and certain times where it's completely dead and it's usually like now during the day where everybody is working <laughs> so they shouldn't be on um, but I find like first thing in the morning or afternoon when everybody's getting off work it starts bumping until the evening or like the middle of the night like usually that's when I get on <laughs> yeah and surprisingly there's not that many people I think we have like I don't know 150 200 people that are in the, the discord server but like my Facebook group for electrician yeah. use got I don't know, 2,500 people in it or something like oh, that. Oh, okay. And it's it's far less active than the Discord is. The Discord is just like all day, all the time. And so, and I'm, trying to pull, I, so like, I'm on Facebook pages with a lot of um, women only or female only electrical groups and stuff. And yeah, I did notice, um, yeah, the Discord is a lot faster paced and just a broad range of topics. Um, not as, yeah, not as uh, um, the Facebook is a little bit slower and stuff. Even with LinkedIn, like I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, me too. That's nah so linkedin's kind of a little bit slower than the facebook and all that so yeah and i found linkedin has been really like a source of people who are in business finding me at that want to do business with me like you found yes. me through linkedin <laughs> and paul yeah. abernathy and a lot of these uh supply houses and companies that want to send materials and figure out some kind of partnership so that's the business end of everything and um, it's kind of cool to have all these different little outlets, but yeah, Discord is was, my favorite so far. I was on a job, well, I was a retreat center a couple weeks ago, and I had a serious issue. And I was like, oh, which which app do I use? I needed help. And so I literally sent it on, um, I sent it on LinkedIn because I'm with a lot of master electricians and just electricians journeymen. Um, and the response on that was like super quick, like how to solve the problem, what to, you know, alternatives and stuff. So that was really good. I did like yeah. that. Um, and knowing who they all are, because you know, everybody's got a bio and stuff. That was cool. Yeah. So, but do you spend a lot of time, like when you're on LinkedIn, do you use that to ask questions to other experienced people or do you yeah. do that to like post statements about things? Mainly I do a lot of DM and interviewing. So I'm very okay. old school. Like um, I find uh, electricians uh, like like Paul, David, um, and other electrician stuff and talk to them. So like have conversations, find out who's local. Like a lot of – and like it is. It's like um, – I don't know, LinkedIn is like the, the chamber, <laughs> chamber of commerce but online. Um, pretty much all of – if I've done an in-person interview, chances are we met on LinkedIn first. So Yeah. Yeah, I'm finding but, that too. And the LinkedIn, the learning, and well, it was called uh, Lynda.com before, but the, the LinkedIn learning is good too. So. Oh, Linda I'm, was amazing. Holy cow! You could learn yeah. pro computer programming. But math, it's still there. Huh? It's on the. It's just called Link LinkedIn Learning now. So. Okay. Microsoft is it a paid it service? Uh, I don't think so. Is LinkedIn a paid service? Oh yes. Okay. Oh, but some of the videos are free. My creative director, okay. she's, she's seriously on lynda.com or LinkedIn learning <laughs> constantly. That's cool. Yeah. That's really cool. So, but that's where, if, like, literally the other day, I'm, so I'm learning about cybersecurity. And, like, you said you're going to go to the CES show. So, um, one of my big issues is CCC TV, CC cameras, closed circuit, um, um, closed circuit cameras, and, um, your video recording of that, how they're getting hacked in and stuff. Oh, when shit. I went, oh yeah, it's some fun stuff that hackers like to do when they ain't got no time. <laughs> um, but trying to figure out the programming, you know, language behind it. And if you want to be up to speed, you go to lynda.com or LinkedIn um, learning. And usually they have like within an hour, like, oh, okay, now I get the gist of it. Now I can go back in and figure out <laughs> how to solve yeah. the problem and stuff. So. Or like if I'm trying to figure out what the terminology is, like when it comes to cybersecurity or, or if it's like a low voltage system or something or even high voltage. They don't have high voltage yet, I don't think. I know it's coming, but they don't have that yet. Well, yeah, isn't kind of the shtick like it's, it's, a, it's consumer electronics, so anything that's in the consumer domain? Well, that's for CES show. For yeah. the LinkedIn, um, it's, oh, yeah. it's training for professionals who don't have a lot of time. At least that's I, how they advertised it before. So that's okay. why you got like the two minute, three minute spiels or little videos and stuff. So, how often is that updated with new information and new videos? Oh, like every week. 
So really? every weekday. Okay. So, so you can take one course, and then if you get to the end of it, there's probably going to be new content added pretty, relatively quickly. Maybe not in that same area, but different mm. topics. So. Okay. And they've been pretty That's good, true. like I said, on more technical stuff. So like uh, the programming, like the, uh, I was looking at API, application program inter programming interface. Mm -hmm. So whereas if like you look on the internet, it'll take you forever to try and find something, but they've got like an hour video on what it is, wh why do I care about it, what's the latest, advantage, you know, something a little bit more condensed they have. That's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, that's well, I, like my go-to. <laughs> yeah, that's really helpful. I feel like we need a lot more of that, like in the trade, like specifically about topics and things. That's kind of uh -huh. why I like Discord is because we can, we can put out a whole bunch of different like types of discussion and then you can sift through the ones that you care about. Whereas right. a lot of like Google, Facebook, how they parse resources to you, it's, it's a, a lot more difficult to sift through information. You know, even in a Facebook group, it's like you only get to talk about what everybody else is posting and talking about. Well, so. can I say what was annoying? And I was like, you know what? I need to tell Dustin to do this. <laughs> so I'm teaching, you know, I'm teaching the code. And when you're teaching code at night, everybody's tired. And, but, <laughs> so I can't have hour long videos on code. And yet yeah. when I'm looking for videos on code, that's all there is, these elaborate, you know, let's walk yeah. through the calculation. I'm like, no, I need something like within 10 to 15 minutes, maybe an example, get it through. I could not find anything like that. Angel, and I was just, huh? make it, make it. No, 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 that's you. You're the electrician. You no, 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 no. <laughs> but if, like, that's what I'm finding too is a lot of people want, they want me to do everything under the sun, and it's like well, I have to. Well, just just telling you this little part. <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. Is like I'm I'm noticing patterns in what people are asking for. Is they're like we want short, concise, two to three minutes. We want the exact answer we're looking for. You don't have to talk about all of Article Four Thirty in one video. Right. But like talk about what's the one thing that Facebook argues the most about? Boom, talk about that. <laughs> you know, and like well, find and, and the actual answer. Yeah, so as I'm teaching, um, I, I now know like there's certain points, like last night the discussion was on conduit fill, you know, and I'm like, oh, conduit fill, you can learn in a two minute video. And I, but we want an example. Okay, I could do that. But the question was on um, grounding and bonding, <laughs> article 250. Yeah, yeah, and... you have to have specific <laughs> or else you're in a five hour video. Yeah, and I'm just like, and, and then they're studying for the state exams. So it's kind of like, okay, even after the video, we're sitting there, we still have to do calculations. So like I said, they're already tired. There's only so much of a video you're going to watch. And then trying to keep them awake, being interactive to do a calculation. So it's like, yeah. So, so yeah, I might have to do something quick or something. For them. Yeah. Because I, I didn't find anything like that. So when you're, when you're teaching, uh, do you notice that, people have more difficulty with grounding and bonding trying to figure out what the terminology is and where they're at in the system or is it yep. more finding like um sizing conductors or, or things like that like what's the biggest problem you see both because literally i introduced a cute little video it's actually from a canadian guy on uh, what is grounding that just talks about what grounding is in general and that's about 12 minutes um that's kind of the intro i use i, I think that's rimstar.org um he, he just goes through that after that then it, we talked about the terminology um actually because on discord the australian the gentleman i can't remember his name um we were talking about the differences between you know in australia what they call grounding conductors and grounding electrical oh, yeah. conductors it's different by country um so then trying to define okay what's the exact it is a terminology so like if you ever want to have yeah. you want to have a uh, video on just the terminology of article 250. <laughs> yeah i thought about that i thought about yeah. that because, but after okay. that yeah after the terminology then you get into the calculations and you have to like if they give you a diagram you have to be able to show okay what are they talking about are they talking about the electrode are they talking about you know the the um grounded new the grounded conductor or the the equipment grounding conductor what are they so they have to be able to know that so that's kind of yeah. like and so for this class we'll probably spend like three weeks just on article 250. okay so just so they'll get it and stuff but it's it's very and then service bonding <laughs> all of that stuff so yeah and yeah i think it's a little intense mm -hmm. i think what help what would what would help people at least in my audience is a lot there's a lot of people that want like really advanced stuff without having a basic understanding of everything and so i'm trying to over like the next year 
is just put a solid foundation down of the basics for everybody. Mm -hmm. So then the next year I can spend time building it and then the next year, you know, get more and more advanced. But a lot of the people that watch my stuff end up getting into the trades and then they start watching my stuff. So they, they like to have a bedrock that kind of follows where they're right. at the trade with it. And so it's, it's going to be a while before I'm doing like really heavy duty stuff. That's super. And we're not going anywhere. Yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly. So, um, and but, in fact, like I'm, I like, I like learning the history of electricity and power and stuff. So like a lot oh, of stuff that too. was from, from the 1890s and stuff, like I'm reading yeah. Faraday and Maxwell, their, their conversations and stuff. Um, it's still stuff that we talk about now, you know, and let's yeah. get real. The transformers that are up in the air have been up there since like 1940, 1950. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I actually did. Uh, when I was thinking about this whole electrician, you thing, I was like, okay, so I should start from day one basics, like, what is electricity and where did it come from? So I started to build out this whole outline and then I got, it got so deep that I was like, this is an hour long video. If I'm going to go back to like the Baghdad battery and go back to uh -huh. Egypt and like all of where that stuff came from and then come, you know, like once it hit the 1900s, like everything uses electricity. So you've got radar, you've got sonar, you've got all this stuff, different stuff. And I'm like, I can't possibly cover this all in a video. That's just retarded. There's way too much. Uh -huh. But it's still really interesting. It's amazing once the 19, or 1900 hit how just explosive everything became in our industry. Yeah, it's kind of like the same thing as the, well, the Internet of Things. Like I, from 1900 oh, yeah. to 1920 when you had all, everything had to be electric. Like, you know, all the patents and stuff, everything had to be electric from 1900 to 1920. Now everything has to be Internet connected. And so, oh, yeah. like, you know, who the hell needs a toaster connected? Like, <laughs> you know, in 10 yeah, years. I'm, yeah. Right, and, and that was what came out of all those experimentations in the 1900s and the 1920s was just because they were stupid at the time. For instance, who would want to have some heat put on their hair to curl the, themselves? Right. That was actually a <laughs> stupid contraption that was made in the 1920s. Yeah. And actually the biggest one was, was um, the iron. You know, that's really when they say what, what, how, what took off electricity, it was the radio. And the iron, because women had, you know, Mondays was their washing day and they had to iron everything and they were tired of being held to the stove. Well, somebody said, oh, well, just, you know, attach it to your light and you've got this little iron thing. And that was what Shit. exploded. <laughs> so it's like, so wait a second. Know. You're saying huh? I this is really ignorant and stupid, but what did oh. they do for the iron? They had to take the iron and put it on the stove and at the stove. And so from the stove, they had to iron all their clothes by the stove. Because the only thing in the, yeah, so the only thing in the house that would would heat up a an iron is a stove. Oh my god! So if you just think about it logically, okay, well if you're ironing, you can't be cooking. Yeah. <laughs> so so some genius, I don't know who, I can't um, say it, said, oh well, you know, it's just a little small thing. Let's let's attach power to it, and yeah, that sucker took off. <laughs> oh, that's nuts. Yeah. So and and the radio, everybody's like, who the heck wants to listen to a ra you know listen to something yeah. when they could go to a live performance? But those were like the two things that like made electricity like everybody wanted it. They wanted to hear the radio and they wanted an iron. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then TV completely disrupted everything for radio, and now we've got our phones. I mean, like this just but this disrupts everything. We've got all human knowledge here. So, like, who wants to sit and watch commercials and watch a TV when they can watch whatever streaming on their own time? Well, I, I think for me, commercials are, like, a cute luxury. Like, if I want to, I'll watch it just because. Like, I think on my Hulu subscription, I have, like, I can watch commercials and stuff. And it's good because they don't show, but I hate commercials on YouTube. Like, I will oh, pay. Oh, me too. <laughs> I will <laughs> pay the too. rate. I, I, I've heard, and, and if somebody has, you know, the, the non premium and it stops like what is this what is wrong with yeah. your youtube because it's the most annoying part about the commercials is they're just haphazard like they just come in and you're like it, there's not even the traditional way of like oh let's leave you on a cliffhanger yeah. no, it's like, <laughs> so I, I i can't stand that so i think hulu yeah. does actually try to do that um but that's probably the only one and we are so oh. ot what are we <laughs> Well, it, you know, it's really funny is this weekend I had some friends over and we were all sitting and watching a movie and it was on YouTube or it wasn't a movie. I don't know. It was something we were watching on YouTube, but 
an ad came up at the worst time. It was like, we were so engaged and then it was just like, boom. And it was talking about like inserting chips into people now that, so that they're, they can like have their medical, I I don't know. It monitors their medical stuff. And I was just like, I hate YouTube. And my buddy was like, dude, you're a YouTuber. You do this to everybody. You put ads on all your shit. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. You're right. All right. I get it now. (laughs) But I do it because I I do it full time. So like that's a revenue stream for me. So, you know, it's a choice to make. But I would love to not be able or not have to do that. I'm still learning about the YouTube stuff and everything. And we did a we did a pre video um, thing. Oh, I guess I should. So how you're being asked a million questions and stuff and to do videos. I've been asked kind of to do videos on how it is to be a female in the trade. Okay. So, um, so I'm in the process of getting a channel set up. It's called Women and Toilets. Um, it's trademarked. I just went to a patent class. <laughs> Wait, women, women and it, toilets, or women, women in and toilets? Toil- no, women and and right, toilets. I couldn't hear you. Not women in toilets. <laughs> <laughs> She's so laughing. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we're not going to make the mistake of the electrician who showed like- and. And for your male people, the electrician, the, the male guys, the electrician who showed the video of how to put a woman in a van, totally inappropriate. We don't yeah. do things like that anymore. I saw so. that. I was just <laughs> waiting. I was like, I had my popcorn. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, Angel, get him. Get him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just like, guys, this is not – because it was under tools. That's what it, that's what pissed me off so bad. This was a Facebook page, and a man was talking about electrician was talking about tools to have in your van, and he's like, how to properly put a woman in. What does what does that have to do? Versus like on Discord, the one thing that is awesome, everybody's showing their tools and their backpacks, and like this is what I use, and this is how I set myself up, and, and the vans. And it's like you know, you see these really how to things, and then you've got you know this one on Facebook. Luckily, a late one of the females on one of the Facebook page, you know, shouted out to Facebook, they took it down. Mm. So that was a good thing there. But yeah, so my my video or my youtube channel is going to be geared toward women in toilets um and we it's the women in toilets because our biggest issue on a job site is getting a clean toilet and it's been going on for like 30 or 40 years but yet we have cell phones we have like you know ads you know or or free tv all that stuff without ads um really cool stuff but we can't get a clean bathroom on a job site yeah, so talk about, like, just for people, you and I have talked about this before, so I understand the issues with this, but for anybody that doesn't, that's male, um, break into it a little bit more, like, what's important about it, and why is this such a big thing for you to have a whole YouTube platform for it? Um, I think, for one, for bringing women into the trade, and then, um, I, I noticed bringing the, all the trades, like, I, I'm specifically an electrician, but this does apply to most of the trades, or any job where there are less than 10% of the women in um, in a particular trade, so, like, a um, uh, train operator, for instance. And so, it becomes an issue where if, when men want to go to the bathroom, they can just go pretty much on a job site. You've got, if it's a 10-story building, you've got a bathroom on each floor to go. Um, and for women, it might be on a job site. It might be downstairs or it might be across the way. Um, It's further out. So just if you think about if you're an apprentice and you've got a male apprentice and a female apprentice, that female apprentice during the day has to take out a little bit more out of her time just to go to the bathroom and come back versus the male who he just goes around a corner, you know, takes piss, comes back, and he's learning. So it's that constant learning. And I think that um, a lot of – I'll call them the bosses on a job site, like whether you're a supervisor, foreman, superintendent, you don't really see the disservice you do by having a separate um, bathroom for for women. It really should be that wherever the female is on the job site, all bathrooms should be clean. All bath, you know, she should have access to any bathroom. And in my past, when I was on a job site, that was the number one issue is I don't want how they try to maneuver it is say, here's a key to the bathroom. You know, and they'll say, here's your bathroom. Well, now you've already segregated the, the female, you know, and so she gets privileges. So then all the, you know, male apprentices or the male workers are like, oh, well, she's got privileges. You, you pretty much have alienated her um, versus just provide clean toilets. And when we say clean toilets, um, an issue that came up was clean toilets that are clean for men and women. So as because biology, you know, guy just goes, takes piss in the urinal. Well, we as females, sometimes we go into the bathroom for other than 
going to the bathroom, um, you know, it's that time of the month and stuff. How do you deal with a, a dirty urinal <laughs> and you're trying to change your pad out and stuff? So the, trying to, to deal with that um, and to raise the issue on the job site about that. So it's not just, um, uh, so that's kind of where the starting point came from that. Out of, also out of women in toilets is how do you bring up issues that, are kind of female oriented uh, on the job site? How do you speak about it without one, alienating yourself? Um, and two, I, I do believe that most guys on the job site are trying to do a good job. They want to help. Trying to give ways that they can help. You know, if they see, because um, there's still harassment on the job too. Like no, I, a lot of, um, and that's on a Facebook page. A lot of times it's a harassment in the form of, um, I call it, uh, annoyance. It's annoyance harassment where, why are you a girl? Why are you here? Why, why are you in the trade? It's mm -hmm. questions like that. After so many years, you get tired of being, of, of being asked, you know, why are you here? You know, the male, yeah. friends, the male guy, they don't ever ask you, you know, why don't you go get another job somewhere else? They're kind of like, you well, know, Hey man, mm -hmm. hold on. Before we dive out, I do want to talk about that, but I've still, I still have some questions about the, the whole uh, facilities thing. So one thing that we talked about last time that I had just never thought about myself being a man in the trade is the issue of cleanliness, the necessity for cleanliness in a bathroom to begin with. Because I think most dudes, guys on a job site, like we're just used to filthy, really sh terrible porta johns and we right. just we just deal with it. So I think there may be people that are thinking, okay, well, you're a woman. Why can't you just use the same bathroom as us and just deal with it like the rest of us? Because so. we as women will get infections, you, you know, exactly. uh, urinary tract infections. Um, we could get all kinds of, uh, just because it's just inherent. If we have to sit on the toilet or we're, we are like, and that's the thing, a guy can whip out his thing and not touch anything. I'm, I'm just right. being honest. She's laughing. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, 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 no. We, that's what I want you to talk about. Yeah. We normally, and, and, and it's been like, we have to, what I was always taught is like, if the bathroom's really bad, you've got to kind of squat, you know, and not touch anything. But yeah. it becomes a problem because when you do that and you're in a porta john, your face is like right up against the door. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's like just physically hard. And then God forbid it's the middle of winter and you have big old car hearts on, you got a hard hat, you got your safety vest, all that you've got to take off just to go to the bathroom and then try and keep all of that away from the piss and the yeah, urine. And a, a guy's it's got a zipper a... <laughs> on the outside of every single thing. Yes. Very easy, but you have to completely unclothe yourself in the middle of right. winter to be able to deal with. Right. So it's a, it's a, it. yeah, it's a bigger issue. Um, and I don't think that the bosses take account of that. Um, and something really simple. And, and I say this to the general contractors. Um, one movement is just get handicapped. Uh, toilets, you know, get the handicap ones. Plenty of room, move around. Nice. You got male and female. It's it's not something that is um, a hard. It's just a cost factor there. But if you yeah. put, you know, um, handicap uh, bathrooms on site, you know, how much more is that um, bring in? That might solve like seventy five percent of your issues there. You know. Um, so do you subscribe? Do you think that there should or should not be segregated bathrooms for men and women? So that like women's only, men's only. There are two camps. So I, there are camps that women are like they want their own um, because even try as they might, there are still men who don't know how to wipe their asses or don't know how to do things. So there is a camp of women who um, feel that they want se se you know, separate bathrooms. Um, mm -hmm. I am more along the lines of – and there's another group of women who are like, no, I just want a bathroom that's where I work. So if, if when I'm on a floor and there's a designated bathroom for that floor, I want to be able to go into that floor, hurry up, do my business, and get back to work. So yeah. which that would equate every single bathroom on the job site should be clean so and should be available to us. Not just one, like I said, that's I got to now take 15 minutes to go to the bathroom when I could have taken you know a few minutes and then gone back into instruction or going back to doing my work. So it just yeah. kind of, it slows us down. So, but there are two camps, um, on that one. So, okay. Yeah. I've actually been on jobs with female electricians where, uh, they're just small jobs. It's not anything like large where there, there's somebody making sure that all of the things are in place for everybody to have equal, you know, and there's just no port of John at all. And right. so it's like all the guys are fine. We just go back behind the bushes and we're good, but it's like, there's yeah. just, it's, it's not like I think anybody's doing this on purpose. We just we're idiots like dudes we just don't think of this right. kind of stuff until it's a problem and it's like okay now that we know like how do we deal with this so i appreciate you bringing really, all that up 
and that's really what the women in, in toilets is is uh, you know, being a platform to talk about women's issues and stuff, but also at the same time to inform the guys who are like, okay, I know about it. What can I do? Here's yeah. what you can do. You can, you know, go to the general contractor and say, hey, can't we at least have a couple of handicapped uh, Porter Johns on, on the site or some bigger ones? Or I mean, you know, um, you, just different ones. What, I, what we don't want is that split toilet. <laughs> you seen that where yeah. it's it's urinal on one side and then the uh, the toilet there and there's no privacy that's that was annoying that one's not appropriate yeah so, at all <laughs> Dude, I, it makes me think like as far as your your message reaching a lot of people I think it would almost be a good idea just to have a funny video where you have women like dressed up and going into porta potties and being like, oh you know just over a little bit over dramatic about it but make it a funny video because I think videos getting shared it's like uh the best videos that get shared are when somebody's watching something and they're like dude you gotta check this out you know what i mean well yeah we we have uh it was actually pictures last week i was at a place where um they had a it was a sign on the women's bathroom that pretty much said you know uh, we aim to keep the bathroom clean and we expect you to aim properly <laughs> But it was on. Okay, you got That's it, right? Funny. Yeah, it's funny. Get it. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. but it was it was on the women's bathroom, and so I posted it on Facebook saying, you know, any comments, and um, yeah. so the comments were like, you know, oh, maybe it was, you know, meant for the men. So I went over to the male bathroom. No sign whatsoever on the men's bathroom. <laughs> what the? <laughs> so, yeah, so yes, there are several pictures videos um we'll look at and stuff and yeah that actually has come up to show how I, and maybe i might do it get it in my car hearts and stuff and show just what it takes to strip down you know even before you've gone to the bathroom just just turning around in the thing yeah so yeah because i remember you mentioned last time we talked by the way we recorded one of these like a month ago and i fucked the entire thing up so that we're re re redoing this so we've already had a lot of these conversations mm -hmm. um but you brought up a story last time of uh, like you, maybe it wasn't you, but like just mentioning something to somebody like that. I, I need to go to the bathroom. And the guy was like, uh, <laughs> that was me. you're like, I don't actually need to go to the bathroom. And he was like, Oh my God. That uh, was, yeah, about. that was too cute. Um, cause I said, sometimes women go to the bathroom for different reasons and stuff. And boss alert, not every female has the same period structure or, you know, you know, menstruates the same way. So it was the one time this poor fella, um, he was my sub foreman and I was working with him. We had just had break about an hour ago. And so I turned to him and said, Hey, you know, I got to go to the bathroom. And he's like, well, if you don't mind me asking, you know, you just had break, you know, an hour ago, why didn't you go to the bathroom then? And he was like dead serious. Like, you know, you should, you should take that. And so I very politely said to him, I said, you know, there are some times when a woman goes to the bathroom and she doesn't have to go. And the look on his face was like, <laughs> uh, I get it. Okay, don't go. say anything else. Go. <laughs> um, and so you don't have to be rude or nasty. You're just kind of like, let me just explain a little bit about female anatomy um, to you. I mean, and there's also like, and, and I have a lot of friends and stuff. So I know, or females where, some of us are like, oh, man, you know, having a period is just a matter of, you know, changing pads. Others, it's mood swings. It's uh, cramps that are, like, severe, uh, you know, to the point where it's like, all right, I'm here to work, but I'm taking my all. <laughs> but, like, you know. Well, yeah, but you have this constant pressure all day of something nobody else around you is having, and you still right. have to work through it. And you're constantly in pain, and you just want to rip everybody's fucking head off like you're in a, you know. Right. It's stuff that we – I don't even think about that kind of stuff. Like, when I'm working side by side with a woman – I don't, I just think, well, they're just like a dude, <laughs> you know, like I don't think about that. And funny, I shit you not, up until, I don't know, a couple of months ago, I still had no idea about a woman's cycle. Like my wife sat down and banged my head <laughs> against her head. And she's like, let me tell you about like right. every day of our life is a point within this cycle. There's never yes. a point in my life where I'm not in the cycle. And I'm like, what? You mean it's not like just a four or five day fucking thing yeah, every month? It's just like, oh, you fucking idiot. <laughs> That four, that four or five or seven day or eight, that's just the bloody part. There's still the right. emotions that go involved. Um, and I think, like, I'm older, you know, in my 40s. You kind of know when you should not be around people or when you should keep your mouth shut. Yes. <laughs> and that might be, you know, um, if you're um, pre, uh, you got, what do, we, what do you call it? Premenstrual. If you got, 
yeah, if you're PMSing, you after a while you kind of know that you're PMSing and you don't want to talk to anybody. And that's kind of like, you know, let's be quiet and stuff. But then if something happens and you overreact, now all of a sudden you're considered a bitch on a job. But you can't necessarily say, you know, yeah. it's because, you know, I'm PMSing, which is kind of a real it is to a lot of women, it's a huge real difficulty. But then if you go that route and you say, okay, I'm PMSing, the guys are like, oh man, you know, she's just they they have all these different conceptions of it so maybe that's like one of my jobs i gotta try and dispel it or it's you just know. A, it's just the not knowing angel like we are yeah. we're idiots like men we are such simple creatures to a fault but also sometimes simple to like a benefit you know what i mean and i think that it just takes like this talking about it for people right. to know like holy shit this is an issue i didn't even know this is an issue well i'll bring up another one which was really cute now this is kind of this would never happen on a discussion with uh, with guys, but it was actually a really good discussion on um, the Facebook pages with the women. And I bring it up: um, safety vest and wearing of safety equipment. And women, most women do have breasts or some form of, of thing. And that was actually brought up like, you know, how do you wear this properly or how do we get proper safety gear? You know, and so the one female, she was in a, a training class and there, and they're trying to explain to her how to put, you know, how to, you know, put the safety vest on or how to strap on. Yes. And she's like, and so it's up on your chest and she's got, she's very well endowed. How do I do that safely? You know, so it's, those are some of the issues that they deal with. Um, you know, do you wear a sports bra underneath? Do you wear a wired bra? Um, as you're just getting through the day, something like that. Cause for us That's women, crazy. if you don't have a perfect bra on, it sucks <laughs> like all day. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of some of the issues that go on. But then on top of that, the safety gear. And and I do know there's a couple of companies I think that are doing specifically safety gear for women. But yeah. um, something I just to- saw an ad on uh, Facebook. Jackie and I were watching something and it was uh, they're making vests now that are yeah. specifically designed for women. And my thought was every vest I've ever worn, like, you know, the, the lime green or whatever. Every one of them is like way too large. They're, yeah. They typically are like one size fits all. So my thought at first was like, is it really necessary to re-engineer a vest for a woman? And it is. Why? In- enlighten one, me. Oh, it, one curves on a woman. So when you get a safety vest, just for example, like the safety vest I wear at night, it's annoying as crap. It is a medium size one, but it's it's very tight up here and then very loose so it it just doesn't conform so if i go walking somewhere and i'm you know if you're close to like heavy equipment or whatever and it snags your 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 safety vest snags on stuff there's no real form fitting way to wear the sa- for to yeah it's make designed it- for somebody that looks like me that has like straight right. dimensions and right it, straight yeah. all the way around so um that's it um the other thing too is like uh, even like a t-shirt like you know um the t-shirts that i get have a awesome pocket but with boobs you know the pens pop out you know it would be oh, nice if they, <laughs> <laughs> it would be nice if they had like you know a, a, a t-shirt that was given out you know that if you're gonna put yeah. a pocket in it put it on the side you yeah. know or somewhere i don't know maybe in the back I, but that's our little things that kind of are annoying that most guys are like you know everybody says hey where's your pen where you know if you want a pen or a calculator or you know a little your tester most guys are like, oh, I'm just going to put it in my, my, you know, pocket, my T-shirt yeah. pocket. There's only so much I can put in here. It was usually like a pen and a piece of paper before <laughs> things start falling out. I mean, so that's kind of. That's funny. <laughs> I just didn't know that. <laughs> oh, man. So, see, now you're giving me all these things to talk about. I was like, I hadn't talked about that one yet. Well, yeah. So your, uh, your channel, is it live yet or is this something you're, you're wanting to do? Oh, it's something we want to do, but I have my creative director saying we have to go live like any day, so we're getting there. <laughs> so who's we? Is there another female that you're doing this with, or? Well, my creative just... director helping her, but I also come with. Um, she's actually, you know, how you're doing everything professional and stuff. So I'm trying to be coming out professional, and my background is in television production and film, so I just can't. I know a lot of YouTubers get started with videos of them in a in a car or you know in a particular place i just can't do that like it's, <laughs> um yeah. so coming out a little bit um a little bit different. so but at the same time getting feedback from from other women um i'm interviewing a lot of other um, female electricians and apprentices and masters and stuff so providing their input so things like that so it's coming cool. 
Well, yeah, let me know once you get your channel up, mm -hmm. uh, even if you only got one video, like, let me know and I'll help you try to promote it um, okay. just to get eyes to it because I think that these are all relevant issues that people do give a shit about, what people want to, and once they know, it's most people, I think, once they know, they're like, oh, crap. Okay, so like, what do we do next? You know. And so well, having... and let me put if I put my business hat on and really think about it. For most companies, you want to have your workers pretty much satisfied and happy. There is yeah. a, leg a legitimate shortage of labor workers, construction workers, and stuff. Um, there really is no need to have female and male uh, issues on a job site. You know, if it can be taken care of, you know, a little bit of extra cash, a little bit of th the keyword thoughtfulness. To just think about it, um, realize yeah. that if you've got 100 men on a job site and now you have your first female and you just throw her to the wolves and you're not exactly sure what to do, you're just like, oh, here, go with so-and-so. Was that the right foreman to put her with? Was that the right, you know, yeah. just a little bit of thoughtfulness. Um, and, but I've, I've actually had it, it, it thrown back at me saying well that sounds like discriminating you're, you're discriminating um and i'm like well but you have this female who's on a job and i give the example of the marine corps so i was in the marine corps and even our first the first three months of the marine corps boot camp is female only training and it's a nice way of training the females because once you leave that boot camp you may be the only female on that at that station but you built up that camaraderie of, you know, here's how women do it. Here's how we do things in, in the Marine Corps. You've, you've got kind of that background and then you can go out and you're like, okay, I can get this done. There's not really that equivalent um, in the construction side where you're still put in that, that environment where you're the only female. Who do you talk to, you know, unless you've got a kind superintendent or foreman or someone who actually might have a wife in the trade or might have a sister or, you know, might know about the issues you're constantly having to figure out how to bring those issues up, like the bathroom. <laughs> um, yeah. So trying to get the boss. And how do you come across without it just seeming like you're a complainer all the time? That's probably, and it, you're not, but without being perceived like that, because you, right. again, you're in a room full of guys that have no fucking understanding for what you're talking about. Right. That's crazy, then, man. Yeah. And so trying to figure out ways, but it kind of, it's it starts at the top. If you're you're if you're the owner of the company, um, you, you're the GC or you're the um, the electrical contractor and stuff. Like making it a precedent to to welcome everybody. Like as I told one guy, uh, he's like, oh, well, we welcome all women in. And there's a difference between opening the doors and then being welcoming. You can have the doors open and say, okay, come on in, be an electrician. But if you have a shitty bathroom, <laughs> if you uh, you know have pictures of you know, naked women on your job site, um, or you constantly talk about naked women or, or very inappropriate things, that's not very welcoming to a female on the job site. So they just end up leaving. So so there's kind of a difference there. Yes, we open the doors, but making it welcome so that they're, they feel like they're a part of the group. Yeah. Yeah. And do you, is it more beneficial to treat Cause there, so there's a lot of guys that are like, I need to be chivalrous and I need to Please like don't. around this. Please yeah. Don't. So just act like you're equal, right? No. And, and I, the best example I can give, I had a gentleman, this was a few years ago. He, um, and sometimes it's as Americans, a lot of American men, they understand, okay, we don't need to be chivalrous on the job site. Um, dealing with, um, some immigrants or people who are, didn't grow up American. There's still that, Oh, I have to act a certain way around a woman. And so I explained it in pretty simple terms. I said, um, unless you're going to give me your entire paycheck, <laughs> then we need, you need to understand that we are equal. So like if I'm carrying a ladder and you're carrying a ladder or, you know, we're carrying our ladders equally. Um, because we both collect the same paycheck. Well, at least in the union, we collect the same pay. So I said, but if you see me out in town at a bar or at a club, and we're in a social setting and you feel it's appropriate to open a door for me or whatnot, then that's fine. We're not on the job site. And that's really the key word there. Like, you know, when we're on a job site, you really need to think of me as a coworker. I'm making the same amount as you. We both have the same job to do. Why are you trying to carry my load? So yeah. we both can carry our own load. And like I said, if you're going to carry my load, give me my, give me your paycheck. I'll carry your paycheck for you, homie. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Let me be so, so sure. <laughs> yeah. So, but, um, 
usually when you kind of explain it like that, like, yes, there's there's a place where if you feel you want to be a gentleman or do things, do that off the job site. It is not needed on the job site. Now, the caveat to that is I've been in trade, like, I've been in male-dominated industries for, like, 20 or 30 years. And there's a certain point, and the old men are, are kind of in this category, too, where I'm not destroying my body anymore for the you know for this job or whatnot so if you do see someone on the job site and this can be a man or a woman who needs some help lifting things it's okay to say hey can i help you do you need some help yeah but the same is true for a dude too right that's what i'm saying your old men are, are kind of like that where um yeah. you know so it, and and maybe that's the thing to think about like if this was a guy would i be asking the same question yeah and if you do it that way, then chances are, if you're asking a guy, you would ask the guy the same question, and you're okay on the job yeah. site. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's funny. The the uh, female electricians I've been around have had to make it a point to teach us how to treat her. So, like, you get that one helper that's like, oh, let me grab that ladder for you. And she's like, get the fuck away from me. This is, you know, like, hey. I can handle this damn ladder. And so from then on out, everybody's like, she can handle her own ladder, you know. So it, it becomes it, an unsafe issue because I've had several times where I'm carrying the ladder and all of a sudden the ladder oh, gets yeah, see, tighter and I'm it, like, what yeah. the <laughs> it's yeah. it's not a cool feeling. <laughs> like you think something's happening. So yeah. yeah. I don't like that. And I've I don't curse the guy out, but I've seen other women do that. So Yeah. So um talk about your entry into the trade. Um because there's some other issues that we haven't talked about that having a female and male in the same workspace or a predominantly male and mm-hmm. a new female comes in. There's stuff like I want to talk about later. Oh, but I also okay. in how you got into the trade and how your experience being a female in the trade went and how you kind of navigated through it. Um, well, I started – because in high school, I was in television production um, at my school. So, which is mainly when you're behind the camera in television production or film, you are kind of, you're a minor- minority. You're uh, not many females are behind the camera. Um, so, I got started there, did corporate video, I ended up in cable. So, I was always running wires. <laughs> so, um, and that was like in ninth grade, it was uh, the lighting. So, I liked getting up in the studio and playing with the lights and stuff. To this day, like I was 14, I learned I hate extension cords with a passion. <laughs> yeah, it was just all my life I've been around extension cords and having to run them. I just, if I could get rid of extension cords, I would. Um, so then went to cable, uh, worked for a couple of cable associations and stuff. And since I was always around wire, and I said, well, you know, and my mother, um, she worked for um, a phone company. So I kind of like knew a little bit about the phone and data centers and stuff. So uh, I said, well, you know what, I might as well learn the full trade and become an electrician. Um, and then I had wanted to start a company. Uh, I had one company doing um, a different industry, but as I was thinking about, okay, I want to start another company, what industry did I have skills in? What did I want? And it really was, I was fascinated with power. So my apprenticeship question was, do I want to be an inside wireman or do I want to be a lineman? And so I said, well, I don't feel like chopping down trees every day. <laughs> That's what a lineman does. So I said, let me go find out about the inside wireman track um, and then go from there. You know, and afterwards, I gave myself like 10 years. Let me do 10 years in the trade and see what niche markets, what's not currently out there um, that I could do. So after graduating, um, there's a lot of opportunity in electrical contracting, like all this cool stuff. Like you talked about CES. Um, my specialty that I learned a lot about is distributed generation, generation or on-site power. Um, and so pretty much from there, just the last 15, no, like 18 years, been studying on-site power, microgrids, your DC and AC conversions and stuff. So like I get really, and then I get geeked out because I, I have an MBA and my bachelor's is in management studies. So I've been studying businesses since I was 14 too. So like you can ask me anything about companies. <laughs> um, okay. But actually I was telling someone the other day, I said how it's so interesting how the rise of electricity and power or steam uh, actually, you know, it, it was built on because of corporations and companies. So there's like this neat little history and the trains, of course, the trains and the power, uh, the grid and all that was kind of that same movement. And so, so I could super geek out on all of this right now, but, um, <laughs> that's but okay. You know, Go so, for it. I'm a so nerd I, too. <laughs> yeah. So I've, um, 
been in the trade. And then I, so in, tw- was it 2010, 2009, 2010, when that, when the big recession hit, a lot of us got laid off. Um, and so ended up, that's how I ended up working nights, um, working on trains at the, the local, um, uh, station. So, and that was interesting because what you learn in, in the apprenticeship and most construction electricians learn is only AC. They don't necessarily learn about the PLCs and the DC and electronics. Now, older guys back in the 1970s and 80s, they learned about, you know, the electronics and stuff, but they may not know the programming now that goes yeah. along with the electronics. So that's kind of, for me, that's kind of like the entry point, like the AC, DC, putting them together, making, um, making them safe. Uh, and uh, and then bringing power closer to the source. So that's yeah. kind of so that's where I'm at. Did I answer your question? Or did I? Go well, off? I said I said basically <laughs> from the female aspect, getting into the trades. What was that like? Um, yeah. Did so you go? Did you go non-union first, or didn't nope. you say at one point you were non-union? I have you... worked not. I have worked non-union jobs. Never has an electrician. Um, okay. My mother was a union representative for her. Um, her union she was cwa and so the prospect of me going non-union electrician was not in the cards (laughs) so um i had to reach out to the local um and apply and so for me the benefit was i knew what a union was and what my rights were um and i think that that's something that a lot of females who have never been in a union um and, and i do like i'm on linkedin uh and i do get questions from men and women who are not in the non who are in non-union uh positions and trying to uh, trying to say what do we do you know what can i do in this situation um such and such is happening and it's different like if you're in a non-union this is the role that you this is the hierarchy you need to go through here are the things you have to yeah. do if you're union this is what you need to do um and kind of that's explaining that but I kind of already knew that and then I had like a lot of really awesome women <laughs> in, in my mom's group uh, and they were like machinists welders um, oh, awesome. they had been there done that and they knew every single excuse that could happen on a job site like if a man says you know well we just don't have that well that's code for we just don't want you here but you do yeah. have to. <laughs> <laughs> and, and trying to so a lot of times I, what I realized it was easier for me to get on a job site and get a lot of stuff done. And like my foreman, she, she's hilarious. Cause she last, when I met her, she was a year under me and I walk on a job site. She had been on a job site for maybe a month and we were building a stadium and she had been asking for a, uh, a women's restroom, like a safe place. Now this is, ha- this is actually, I've had this happen two or three times. You have the Porter Johns on a job site, right? They put it in a cove, meaning they put the jo- the, the Porta Johns in a place where there's no light. So for most just... men, all they do, they just prop the door open. Yeah. <laughs> <See>? Yeah. <laughs> you you cannot prop the door open when you're a female. But this is this uh, foreman, she was actually doing, you know, dealing with it. And she'd been saying, hey, 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 can we get this fixed? Now she'd been on a job for a month trying to do that. I come on a job that one day and I'm just like, oh, hell no. Especially when I see that right next door, there were, um, like, not even 50 feet, there were actual permanent bathrooms for men and women. But this is what I think, and this is a bias toward construction workers in general, is a lot of companies or owners think that we are not good enough to use the bathrooms that are actually on site. We have to have porta johns yeah and i don't get that i've never destroyed a bathroom ever like when i go to the bathroom i go in handle my business like i would at my mom's house right. you know like I. <laughs> and so i think it's a bias um i'm like that so for me coming in i'm like why are you trying to tell me i have to go use the bathroom where i i can't even see i have to literally prop the door open so guys would see me going to the bathroom that, no, hell no. I said, you need to yeah. open up these bathrooms right there. And so the next day, the bathrooms were open. And so I <laughs> formed, and I didn't yell or fuss. I just made the case like, look, you know, I don't see that. Um, so uh, I formed, she's like, how did you do that? And I said, I just asked. And, <laughs> so I just spoke up. That's literally all. <laughs> yeah, I spoke up and stuff like little things like, um, you know, when we run out of toilet paper. Hey, I need some toilet paper. So, and most foremen are not going to be. We don't mean to embarrass you or anything, but you know, I need toilet paper to go to the bathroom. You guys just kind of shake it off and go back to work. It doesn't yeah, happen. Yeah, see, I don't think that. I 
I don't think that for a guy going up to a foreman and being like, hey, I don't have any bathroom, he would, or a uh, toilet paper, I think he would just be like, well, go get some fucking toilet paper, you know, like for, for us to deal with that. So I know most guys carry toilet paper in their trucks, like religiously, just for that, that issue. And but that's, that's not cool on any level because the toilet paper that you carry in your tool bag, <laughs> uh, you know, for how many months or at a time or whatnot is not the most sanitary stuff you want to be. <laughs> Just, well, but sometimes I like that smell, you know, you got to have like, so that, 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 uh, that like fresh zesty smell of your specific kind of toilet paper. <laughs> I'm kidding. <What> toilet paper? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> well, sometimes there's the really soft stuff, you know, and then there's the, like the single ply oh, no. stuff. That, no, like... I mean, I, get I, I will never forget the discussion in which I said I had no comment. Two guys, kid you not, they were talking about. Uh, whether your ass was clean from wiping with toilet paper or wiping with the fresh scent baby wipes. And, <laughs> and so they turned to me and they're like, Angel, what do you think? I'm not even going to answer <laughs> this question. Like, <laughs> it was just so bizarre. But that, you know, because one was carrying toilet paper and the other one was carrying like, you know, the little fresh wipes and stuff. And I mean, so I learned that, yeah, that's how most guys deal with it. They've got to go number two on a job, you know, and, and, or, I mean, most of the time for guys, they just hold it till they get home. So, and so a lot of guys, it's just like not an issue to them. The, yeah. the issue for women is if we hold our, you know, say we don't drink all day and we wait until we get home, that's where you get an incident of, of that's, uh, you get urinary tract infections. Um, women are more prone to that and that shit hurts. <laughs> that's like so painful I had it when I was like in my 20s like one time like didn't drink water or whatever and so very painful experience but yeah, so complicated no it's really not put a handicap <laughs> no 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 I mean I mean <laughs> just like the issues y'all deal with in general like it, it's kind of relatively easy to just be a dude and I tell my wife that all the time and and she's like, I don't give a shit. I'm glad I'm a woman. And I'm like, yes. all right, man. I mean, there's certain, and, and I've seen it before on the job site too. Like, um, the men they constantly want to buck up on each other. You know, if you've ever seen two old, I'm pretty sure you have seen this. Two old men barking. That's yeah. just ridiculous. I'm like, f neither of you. If one of you hit the other, you're both going to end up in the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's that that macho ness that. I am glad I, I I don't have to play a part of that. And I do think that for some women, they feel like they have to be. Actually, that was a good question that came up um, I, in a, a pre-apprenticeship. Um, I was talking to some women who were thinking about coming into construction. And one of the question, one of the, the good bits of information that's given to them is, well, you know, when you're dealing with men, you know, um, and you're talking like, don't have any emotion, you know, just, just keep it, you know, um, strictly uh, professional and stuff. And. I think maybe 20 years ago, if you said, you know, keep it, you know, um, professional, don't show any emotion, I probably would have said, yes, you're right. But I think that when you don't have, if there's something you feel emotional about or you wish to, to state, whether the emotion is anger, sadness, you're pissed, um, maybe you do feel like crying, having those emotions on the job site in a kind of a constructive way is actually helpful. When you have, so I think as women, sometimes we're told, you know, just suck it up. I'm not so sure that's the best thing to do all the time. You know, we suck it up and we go end up, you know, talking to somebody else about it. I think there's a time when you do need to express yourself and you do need to say, hey, you know, like literally last night I was pissed about a grounding issue and they knew I was pissed. Most of the time I'm not I'm like, hey, you know, but being able to show that emotion and being a female, I think is a very good asset. Um, but. You know, I know that, and I might be the only one who says that, but I agree with your wife on being. <laughs> no, I think that that issue is is not just a female centric issue. Um, I think that men too, like, often feel like we can't show emotion. Just right. that's how men act in society. So not showing emotion and letting things build up. Uh, Bill Burr, you ever watch any of his stand up comedy? I don't know Bill Burr. Oh, Bill Burr is a great. Uh, he's but he's got this thing where he's he uh, talked about his dog dying and then he like went into the bathroom real quick and he's like I cried for about three seconds and then I bottled that shit up and I put it up on that shelf of anger that every man has in their stomach that they live right. with their whole life. But it's yeah. the same kind of thing. It's like it, the, showing emotion at work is like a 
it's kind of like a taboo thing in general, don't you think? Yeah. Well, and that's what it, so a lot of times when you have females on a job site who do have a bit of emotion, instead of, so that's why I said, I, I think the advice of saying for them to suck it up and, and just bottle it, I don't think that does justice for the women or the men on the job yeah. site. So I think that there's, it's a time for a change on that. And I'm not talking about, let's go all say kumbaya and have touchy feelings on the job site. But, you know, if somebody's pissed or somebody's upset, it should be addressed. Um, and yeah, right then and there. Otherwise, yeah. it's going to bottle up It's gonna and it's going to fucking explode at some point that doesn't even make sense. And then you're like, whoa, yeah. man, where did that come <laughs> from? You know? Right. Yeah. So I agree with that. Yeah. So that's something to kind of talk about how to constructive emo maybe that's a topic constructive emotion on a job site so yeah so okay let's break into a little bit about some other female male issues uh what about like harassment or <laughs> or even like mutually uh desired attraction on a job site and what you've noticed that that causes um so that is kind of a it's a catch-22 if the majority of your your adult life, let's just say, and I say for like, you know, um, women and men in their 20s and 30s when they're working, if the majority of your week is spent on a job site, you know, chances are you may find your potential mate on a job site. Um, so, and I've heard, I've heard this argument from both men and women um, saying, you know, well, what if I see somebody I like on the job site? What's the best way to approach them? Um, versus most men, if you're given a sexual harassment course, if at all, before you start working on the job site, it's like, don't talk to another woman, you know, don't talk to her, don't do that. Um, it's a it's a fine line, you know, and I think that if a guy is honest, or a girl at that matter, if you're honest and you're like, hey, there's a mutual connection, I don't think there's anything wrong in asking the question, but whether either party says no, that's it. You know, be respectful, no means no. Walk away, yeah. not your, um, not for you to do, um, but to just blanket cause it and say, uh, you, you know, don't talk to the women, you know, just, just imagine they're all married or whatnot. We're still human, we, you know, we still have, and. Uh, women still like to be hit on and told they're pretty by men and women and men like it from men. Like, that's the okay. issue that I'm getting at it, right, is that that it there's is. like a weirdness there because sometimes it might be okay and sometimes it's like how dare you and how do you know it is that? and it's a and like i said it's a catch-22 it's a hit or miss like you know there might be a guy who's attracted to the female um what i don't like is and and i can speak for a lot of women on this one is when you are trying to get to know me on a job site you know whether just to know me or whatnot and the first question is are you married Yep. I knew that was coming. I was hoping that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> that is like, annoying. Wait, why don't you ask if I have a dog? <laughs> or yeah, like, I mean, you if know. If I like dominoes. <laughs> yeah, or, I mean, a very simple answer, you know, um, and I've had, I have no problems. I have kids, you know, and guys have kids. We talk about kids, you know. It's like, oh, my son's doing this. Boy Scouts are, I got a, my daughter and Girl Scouts. You know, you have those family conversations and stuff, just about family in general. Um those are kind of safe conversations or, you know, um, what got you into the trade? Like I said, if you're not going to ask the guy that question in the beginning, don't ask the female because that's annoying. You know, if, but if, if you are a genuine foreman, mechanic or something, you just want to know, hey, man, what, why you, you know, why did you decide to pick the trade? And you ask everybody that question, then, you know, it, that's one thing. But yeah. Thinking on the job site, I mean, it's like, it's like any other, like, you think about the office, <laughs> you know. You're going to have those issues um, where if you do date on the job site, people are going to know about it. And then if you break up, people are going to know about it. You, it's, it's like one of those things where if you're going to do it, there's, again, the word thoughtfulness about it. Um, and it doesn't have to be anybody's business. Like you can be on the job site and the two of you can keep it down low and be like professional during the day and y'all go hang out at night, you know, and maybe only yeah. a couple people know. It doesn't have to be broadcast. You're not like, um, you know, going around doing crazy stuff on company time. And yeah. me becoming an electrical contractor, I'd be damned if I come on a job site and I open up a sea container and I see something I shouldn't see. So, <laughs> yeah. not appropriate. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah, but so that's I think anywhere. Uh -huh. I think if you're like if a uh, um, shoot, I'm sorry. I just forgot what I was going to ask you. Uh, oh, so yeah, you brought up like the, the line of questioning. 
uh, if you if you ask a woman if she's married, I think that there's a reality which that's not an offensive thing to ask as well. So like me, I might meet somebody and it's a guy. And the first thing I ask him is like, oh, you married? You got kids? And I don't mean anything by that. And I may ask a woman that same thing. And it's not me coming off as an attractive thing. Um, but I think that where you're coming from is saying like, if you feel attracted to somebody, maybe the first question out of your mouth, sh you should imagine them with the opposite sex genes or uh, right. imagine that you're not attracted to them. How would you talk to them before right. talking to them? Right. Just getting to know like and, and it probably safer bet is you're both on a job site, you mm -hmm. know, and, you're, you know, you talk about tools and trades and stuff first um, and, and see where it goes, you know, from there. And there are like, you know, I was married uh, for most of my life as an apprentice. So I don't want to talk about family. I don't want to talk about, you know, um, marriage or anything. I just want to get, I'm an apprentice. I want to learn how to do my job, you know, show me how to do this, show me how to run pipe. I don't want to talk about things. Then there are some, there are some women and men who are like that, like, they leave their personal stuff at the door when they come in. Um, and, but that also goes toward the community of the job site, like how people treat each other on a job site. If you have, um, because let's face it, when you're on a job, you have friends, you develop these relationships and stuff. And I think it's a, it's a disservice if you go on a job site and nobody is friends, like y'all don't hang out afterwards and stuff. Um, that issue was actually brought up where, uh, it was a female. She was invited to go to the bar afterwards, and uh, this was by I think a sub foreman or a foreman. And he texted her saying, "Hey, we're all going to the bar afterwards." And the question was like, "But she didn't go to the bar." But come to find out, he had said everybody was going to the bar that night, and she was very leery about it. So she asked the group, "You know, what is this about?" And the rightful response was, "If it's a group activity." It should have been announced at the job site, you know, two o'clock and everybody's winding down. Hey, man, we're meeting over at Buffalo Wings for, you know, drinks and stuff. Who's coming? It's an open invitation to send a text message saying, hey, we're all going to the bar is a little bit leery um, and doesn't really speak about, you know, well, who else knows about it? That so kind of like sometimes how the mode of communication you do it sends a sends a signal so that was that was something yeah. that was brought up so like yeah it was like if we're trying to develop camaraderie on the job site make it open you know or you know yeah. the, the guys who um the foreman who bring pizza you know pizza and um and drinks you know on a friday or whatnot They're, that's forming you know relationships and friendships there too because everybody's like taking a break talking about pizza you might talk about football or basketball or something or i'll throw in i knit i you know crochet <laughs> and you never know there met plenty of men who can crochet and knit too. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so really just the theme of it all seems to be mindfulness. Um, well, and thoughtfulness it, and mindfulness, yeah. Yeah, um, just instead of not thinking about things, like maybe try to put more time into thinking about them. And I think like men are still going to make wrong moves and not mm -hmm. realize, but at least the, the act of them trying to be thoughtful, I think is more like better received and will make but, somebody feel more accepted in the workplace well and i will say i know we talked about like what the men should do i think it's equally important what should the women do a lot right. of times the uh if you're on a job site and you're female you don't have to get into an argument over something that you find was offensive or you didn't like you can literally just say that was inappropriate please don't do that again and walk away um if they yeah. say what was inappropriate i think that has a female you have a duty to say what you just did was inappropriate you don't necessarily have to exp and I, I do tell one you don't have to explain it you know you don't have to get into an argument over why you think it's inappropriate it just to you, you didn't didn't make you feel comfortable um and it was inappropriate please don't do it again and yeah. that's kind of very simple um in fact, there's one uh, a group of women I know they have is a little token or little card that um, they're made up and it has um, three sentences on. Even if you're as, as a female, you feel uncomfortable talking to a guy or, or, you know, approaching a guy saying something was offensive or inappropriate. You can have a card that kind of says the same thing, you know, um, uh, you know, not interested, um, I'm taken, just trying to learn, you know, kind of. And you give the card to the guy, you know, like, look, I'm just trying to learn. And you walk away. You don't have to explain it. Because um, I think that's where a lot of the issues come in. Like the guy's like, oh, what did I do wrong? Why don't you tell me? And she's like, okay, 
she's done with you because of what you did. Why are you trying <laughs> to ask more? Yeah. Um, and then, but speaking up and explaining it may help. You know, like I feel she, like it might be if a she cop feels out. Comfortable and 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 that's why I encourage women. If the, if you have if you got the guts to say, hey, it's inappropriate. Um, I don't appreciate this. Please don't do it again. And they ask for clarification. I do think that as a female, you should say, okay, you grabbing my ladder was not appropriate. Please don't do it again. But then we're like, why? I'll owe you a fucking explanation. <laughs> Just don't do it again. And I yeah. think that sometimes women are like, they, they have to explain. No, you don't. A guy's going to tell you, don't do that. You know, don't touch my, my stuff. And you, you ask why? What for? You yeah. don't touch stuff. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's weird because of the, with a guy, I would probably do the same thing. Like if somebody had a really bizarre reaction to me doing something that I just had no idea about, I would be like, okay, like why? I, I don't understand. Just help me understand so that I don't like make a wrong move. And I, you know, because I might do another thing that pisses you off too, not knowing what it is. So yeah, I think, I think it's, that's the crazy thing is like, there's a lot of talk about, about equality like everybody has to have an equal playing field for every single thing and it seems like some of these issues are helping to bring equality and some of them are making it so that we can't have equality like there has to be special cases that men don't get access to because there's a woman around but then there's issues where it's like no if you if you bring this then we both have a level playing field so just the idea of equality in the workplace is like such a volley of an issue. Like one thing I guess where I'm, where I'm going with that is how do you think of every single thing for every single person when everybody is so vastly different, you know, like you mentioned bringing pizza. Like if a, if the, the superintendent brings a pizza to a job site, well, what if somebody's vegetarian and they don't know, like now they're not thought of. And so there's like all these other different things that you have to think of so that every single person feels equally represented. And I think has that's a job that management needs to deal with. Um, and because management, for example, is not working with their tools. So your job is to come in and get the, and get the job done in a nice, efficient manner. If you know your crew and you know their personalities, you can make the job go a lot faster. So coming in has, and that's why I say it's, to the bosses, like really observe your crew. Don't just be like, oh, I need to get this this task done. And you're not really considering the personalities involved, um, the relationships that are going on. And a key example on that one is you decide that, you know, as a manager or foreman, uh, you got a male apprentice who's like this big stocky person uh, with an uh, older guy. And you're like, okay, I want that, that young buck to go run pipe with the older guy. Mm -hmm. And then you have a female who's kind of thin and stuff and you're like, okay, well, I want her to go run, uh, you know, do switch gear work, you know, or something like that. They're both learning. So it really should be, okay, you learn this week, switch. And that, because that way, then you're not good management skills. You never have one person who knows everything and then they all of a sudden die, leave the job site. And then you have no idea what's going on. Yeah. Um, so just like from a business standpoint, you should always be rotating your crew. And I think that when you start rotating the crews and having everybody know what each other's capabilities are and actually talking to each other, you get that worker communication. And, yeah. then, and, and you can then figure out real quickly who doesn't like who, who doesn't want to work with who. Um, but I think sometimes, like you said, when you're setting up that equality, the equality should be, okay, let's rotate. Not yeah. let me give you something because – I. Me as a foreman, I think that you would be best to do this because I'm do I'm doing it based on my bias, not necessarily yeah. whether it's good for the company or not. I'm just like, oh, I just think you're a big boy. You're going to do this. It's sometimes uh, the management training and, and how they can prevent a lot of that tug of war by just yeah. doing some – and that's what I say, some simple things. Like, you know, if you got a crew and you got a female on job site and a man – and asking questions. It's not yeah. – I, I had a, a bunch of foremen um, – and they still do it. Uh, what do you like to do? You know, something as simple as that, asking everybody that, well, uh, you know, I like to run pipe or, you know, I like to, uh, you know, um, use a Hilti gun or something. Yeah. Just knowing your crew on that and then pairing people up and stuff, you can do that. Well, that's why this is probably a bold thing to say, but I don't believe in equality. 
Um, I, I believe that every single one of us is uniquely different. And so when you have a crew lead that knows every single person's skill level and knows that none of them are at the same level, none of them have the same issues in their life, they all come from different backgrounds, mm -hmm. treating each person as unique, important, still having equality of opportunity and all of that, I don't think there should be discrimination had on why people are different. But I do think that every single one of us is different. So even if you have um, a female that comes into the workplace, instead of treating her and overcompensating and giving her all of these rights that even the guys don't have or making sure the guys have this but the, they don't have this, I think instead of trying to treat them like they're all equal and that there's this playing field we're trying to achieve, I think just learning who each person is and what their needs specifically are as an employer and providing for each person's need is more important right. than just trying to hit this like moving target called equality that doesn't really even exist. Well, but in a way, okay. You just had it. You said it already equality. It's an equal opportunity. Sure. So it's, yeah. it's the same thing. It, it is still equal, meaning that everyone gets that same equal opportunity based mm -hmm. on their skill set. I was in, so in business and management, what we're taught a lot of times is persons with disabilities. So if you have someone who has either um, a long-term, um, a permanent disability or maybe a um, short-term disability, treating them equal means that you're providing them the means to do their job effectively. It sure. might be totally different from how you treat another person. So, yeah. but, but you're still, you're affording them that equal opportunity. You're affording them that way to do their job effectively. And so, and yeah. that, so that's where the equality really should be. It shouldn't be like, well, and, and, and you're right. When the guy's foreman says, well, I had so-and-so dig the trench, you know, and, uh, you know, and, but I'm going to have you dig the trench where you just came off of physical therapy for like six months, you know, not necessarily the best use of, 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 um, of a worker in that case so yeah. like equal opportunity is like you really do know your crew you know what they're capable of um and you can bounce them off and you're you're equally supportive and and it's that opportunity that i would say is equal not necessarily not the outcome yeah not yeah that's what i that's how i was taught how to do it so yeah i think that that's important too i just think that there's like viewing viewing everything as like equality is the standard that we're achieving is is missing out and probably going to create more havoc than just the idea of of trying to be supportive of the needs of the individual right. and do you know you like there's some that... people that that like are really really good at conduit work and some people are just terrible at it and so maybe sticking them with somebody specific rather than rotating everybody so that they all have equal time with every single journeyman just my thoughts on it are that well, no, maybe there's somebody that needs to and stick in that that's bar. why i say as a crew leader you should know your crew you're yeah. gonna know that okay so-and-so is kind of a knucklehead I need to pair him up for There's always the much. <laughs> right. And, you know, it's just like, or, or there's just someone who's just not going to get it. You know, it's just for whatever yeah. reason, not going to get it. But if you take the interest, like, I've seen so many foremen not give a shit about their crew, not oh. care, that they just pair them up haphazardly, not even thinking. And now you've created a whole bunch of problems that if you were a little bit thoughtful and you did take into account the knuckleheads, the, the ones who show up late, maybe there might be a couple of drunken, someone's having issues with their home life. Um, and, and making that go smoothly, that's how you get the job done and you get it done on a, you know, on, on time and, you know, um, at a cheaper scale. Uh, yeah. Um, I was going to say something about the guys, but I don't remember what, uh, Oh, so when we talk about equal opportunity, we also need to realize that even in construction, when less than uh, electrical construction, for example, when less than 5% of the workforce is female, there's no way <laughs> there's an equality there. It's already at a disadvantage. Um, so the best thing you can do, like you just said, is to be supportive and try to make it easier or, you know, just as effective for her to do her work as you would the guys. Um, exactly. Not sure whether that will ever turn out to be equal or not when you have such a disproportionate amount of men to women. So, yeah, yeah, um, I, I don't disagree with that at all. Um, I think that it still, I think we're both saying the same thing, just both saying it differently. But, I, but well, I would try so, to here's something that annoys this, and I know this annoys a lot of women too is we are such a small force workforce on the job site. Do not come to me saying, you know what, my girlfriend is doing this, why? 
you know, or my mother is acting like this way. I don't represent every freaking woman that you've ever encountered. I am not the voice of women, you know, and being a black woman, I'm not the voice of every black woman. So just like you would think that like, yeah, but a lot of times we're put in that category because we're the only female on the job site. So, you know, guys might be talking or whatever. And they're like, hey, what do you think, Angel? You're a female. <laughs> There's different women, different personalities, like men. Don't put us in that category, you know, thinking that, oh, we represent. You know, I represent yeah. myself coming on do a you, job site. Do you think that that, do you find that that's more just your preference or do you think that most women feel that way? I think that I would have to probably say 50-50. So there are okay. some women who, who do say, okay, I represent my gender and this is how it is. But I think for the most part, there are other women who are like, man, just let me do my job. Why I got to be a voice of you know, some other woman that I don't even know her story. So true. Yeah. Yeah. That that's gotta be something I think that you evaluate like on the basis though. Cause you know, with me and Jackie, I work with a female every single day. We both kind of, we rely on each other's input because we trust each other and we give a shit right. about each other's lives. But I ask her about like, Hey, can you translate my wife language for me? Like yesterday she got really mad and I just don't understand this. And she's like, well, maybe it's this and that, but, but we care to have those conversations. So it's, right. I don't think it's just because female male that we shouldn't do that. I think it, you just gotta, it's mindfulness, dude. That's what I'm going to name this. It's thoughtfulness <laughs> or mindfulness. Okay. Okay. Uh, what, okay. And you mentioned earlier thoughtfulness and mindfulness. Is there a right. difference between those terms? Yes. What is it? For me, um, I mean, for me, when you're being mindful, I would say mindful is something that you do kind of internally for yourself. Like when you think meditation, like how do, how am I reacting with the world? How am I, um, what are my actions that are taking place? Thoughtfulness is almost on the board, on the same lines as logic. What are some ways that I can accomplish this? And best example is uh, a thoughtful question would be, how can we both get this done and still enjoy the process? That's okay. thinking thoughtfully about the other person's needs and stuff. I think when you're mindful, you really need to think about what your needs are and how you are doing something. But thoughtfulness is including other people and including what their actions are. Okay. I do not know if that's like the definition book. Dude, that's I'm looking at that. I would clarify. <laughs> no, and not because I doubt you, because like now I really do want to know. Uh, yeah. Mindfulness is the psychological process of bringing one's attention to experiences occurring in the present moment, which can develop through the practice of meditation. But I think you're right, like kind of internal. Um, and then so what's thoughtfulness say? <laughs> thoughtfulness. Uh, the state of being absorbed in thought or consideration for the needs of other people. Okay. All right. Well, that's a good way to say that, yeah. So, and I think when you have both of them, mindfulness and thoughtfulness, you are a, a better human being. <laughs> yeah, I think in general, like the whole gender issue aside, like race, gender, everything across the board, when you're, I, I always say that people have a bubble around their head of awareness. And right. as they mature and as, as like kind of bad things happen to them in life, it seems to open up that bubble to include other people in it. And right. the more thoughtful and the more you practice it, the more people are involved and you start thinking about them instead of it just being me, 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 and right. being so defensive and reactive all the time. You can, you can come from a calmer place and be, oh. like show some wisdom and love towards other people. And I think that's... And, I, and just, that's good, like giving back or like teaching. Like when you volunteer or you teach, so those are kind of like inherent skills that you kind of learn too. Like you're, you know, when you're giving back or you're, you're teaching and stuff, you're being you're observing what other people need and stuff and helping them. So, yeah. Well, dude, it was really good talking to you. Um, you have I know. want to say like you're, I know you're part of some organizations that I think you should drop the oh. names. <laughs> yeah. So I'm a member of, um, clue coalition of labor union women. Um, and clue was established like in 1974, pretty much to deal with the, the issues of the time for women actually being accepted into the apprenticeship programs and into the trades and stuff. Um, so that group has really done a lot um, politically and um, just in, locally to try and get more more women into the trades and stuff, um, into predominantly male industries. Um, so, and my mom, she's like the current chapter president of, of, of her chapter. Um, I'm also, well, I didn't wear my t-shirt today. <laughs> I'm in an incubator group out in, I'm in uh, Maryland and DC, Potential Energy of DC, who does um, 
so we all do research and development and trying to do more renewable energy and create more um uh well energy issues and power and stuff i'm on to a lot of groups but those are the ones off the top of my head and then of course ces so uh which yes. is a consumer tech um CTA, Consumer Technology Association. They're the ones that put on the CES show. And I learned about CES even before I was an electrician. It's from my days being in television and video production. But oh, okay. um, like I was telling you, CES is – everything at the CES show is powered. And the fact that they just think power is given, like, oh, we're just going to plug it into the wall. And you're not learning about power factor, or you don't care about harmonics, but then your equipment, when it gets to the customer, gets messed up, and you're like, oh, what's up? Well, I'm an electrician. We need to figure that out. Um, and that's kind of like a little niche market, uh, learning that. Um, those are like the main ones. And I, I do volunteer. Like uh, if apprentices want some help or whatnot, um, my local does have a women's group. A lot of the locals, um, like I know New York, California, they have women's groups um, that you can go and talk to and stuff. And then on Facebook pages, there's a lot of Facebook pages that are women-only forums, which I think are good. Um, but then I do – I did notice something, and I said, since I'm on the women's Facebook pages and then the Discord app, since the Discord app is majority men, would you say? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I, from me reading, I think they're majority men. Um, You've even you been mistaken <laughs> for a man, and I had to step in and be like, yo, homie. Yeah, so there's there's a different discussion that goes on the, the female-only forums and then, like, your Discord app. And I think there's almost – there's a disservice – in that where it's like I like that we're talking and having these I'm calling them the crossover meetings um, because I think there's a lot that the f female groups are missing out by not being on these these dis right now I only know that it's oh. on the discord app um, and then also for the guys not being aware of you know this so kind of having a crossover maybe this is how we do a few things like even at yes. CES we might do some crossover where like you're like totally involved with the the gamers and stuff and I'm looking at like the security issues <laughs> um, yeah no but I and, think he I, I really thank you for bringing that point up because it seems like so much attention a lot of the times is focused on women women in groups alone it's all about just the women I think that allowing men to be in female dominant groups is smarter than it being women only because like there's a lot of things I would be a part of those groups and I think I would learn so much from y'all I think the way that you logic through circuitry is way different than the average man and how our brain connects certain things and like I I think that there's a, a strong need for men to be able to be in women only groups because I don't think that like I know that the industry has always been pretty much male only and you guys had right. to crack your way into it. But I think we as men need to give a shit enough to try to crack our way into these women only groups. So I would love it if if anybody in these groups would like invite me or allow me to be in the group. But I also understand that you guys have created that environment for a reason. Well, and there's a there's a time and a place for it. So like as a member of Coalition of Labor Union Women, there might be and they've been around, like I said, since the seventies. And they have male members, and it's that's and good. and so having and and that's one of the issues. If you are only talking to other females about issues and realizing that ninety five percent of the workforce is men, how are you actually affecting change um, that way? You can have you can have your female only discussions, just kind of brainstorm and stuff. But sooner or later, it's got to be like a full circle. Okay, we need to include the guys. Um, you know, in the past, like with Clue, they've had uh, okay we got an issue coming up. We need to talk to the men. Let's have an executive breakfast. And we inform them of what's going on, you know, mm -hmm. inviting them in and stuff. Let's have them as members. Um, I put on, I helped put on a, um, a fashion show in April where it was showcasing women in the trade and showing them how, uh, you know, what they look like during a day and uh, what they look like, you know, just personality wise and stuff. And I had to pitch this idea to like pretty much all male boards and they just were not getting it. Like, you know, I was like, what's the point of, because I'm asking, it was a fundraiser. So I'm like, well, why should we give to that? And just being there to talk about saying, hey, we need your support because not just monetarily, but physically come out and support, come out and see what we're doing. Uh, trying to invite them in where a lot of men just say, okay, we'll give you money and just go do what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the other token of it. It's like, oh, so some guys are like, okay, we'll support you by y'all having your own little group. But then there's nothing that comes back. Um, the accountability, 
like if we're going to have a women's only group to to talk about issues okay let's let's uh, be a family let's talk it out you know and then yeah. let's present ourselves as a front these are what we need done you know um or if we decide uh to have men come in okay this is the topic we're going to talk about today and do that because that's really like you said that's really the only way it's going to happen um and i've seen really good examples of that happening and i read the funny story it wasn't the office do you watch the office yeah do you remember the time it was it steve carell i don't watch a lot of the office but i remember that episode he wanted to learn more about the females so he thought a good idea to learn about them was to take them shopping <laughs> oh no i didn't see that <laughs> I <can imagine>. um, <laughs> But in the end, he, because he was with all the women and stuff, they actually did kind of learn off of each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, his, his choice of taking them shopping was not, I mean, it was a dude thing. But the fact that he came and he was trying to figure out a problem um, that the women were having that the men weren't, that was kind of a neat little funny way of, of, of doing it. But uh, that's kind of how you have to have it. So, yeah. Or okay, like you said, I, the funny pictures. <laughs> yeah. I have one sticky issue i want to talk to you about you have talked and, about a lot of sticky issues <laughs> i know <laughs> this one is one that i have a personal feeling about my feelings uh -huh. about things change often with new information so like well, you're human yes how i think about things today may be different uh -huh. uh, definitely after this interview a lot of uh, things have, are different in my mind okay. um, so i have noticed a trend in the influencer space in the trades so there's a lot of companies like myself included, they see Instagram, thousands of followers. Hey, let's send you some free tools and, and you do some reviews and some posts. And so these brands start kind of supporting these influencers and they become right. bigger and bigger. Uh -huh. um, I've noticed a several um, female electricians that are part of this. And I think Who are they? Are, um, <laughs> It, well, the reason the reason for me not saying their name is because I want oh. to talk about there are some women that just go about every day being doing what they do, wearing tools and, and talking about it. But I've noticed there's a trend with a, a few of them where they start. I don't know how to position this without seeming like. Dude, you might as well say it. We're like nope. family now. What? <laughs> no. Okay. So there's some women that that be, now that they have a following, they're. Uh, taking like bikini posts, showing off their body, doing really, really sexual stuff. <laughs> and so my question is like, I don't mind looking at stuff like that at all. Uh -huh. sure. But how are you supposed to react? Yeah, it's like, do you want me <laughs> to respect you and see you as a woman in the trade? Or do you want me to see you as a sex symbol? So how do, how do you even approach that? And it seems like the comments are like, hey, 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 oh yeah, take it off, you know. Oh. It's like the stupid, typical fucking male stuff. And when I see it, I'm just like, Put your fucking clothes on. Like, why, why, why is it that that needs to be your way to gain attention rather than it just being about your brain and about you functioning as a as an electrician? Do you want the respect of men for, and women, you know, mm -hmm. to respect you for what you are and who you are? Or it just seems like a cheap play to me. And maybe I'm ignorant. I'm so sorry. That's just my first reaction I get. No, it it's actually not a um. That's a very touchy subject, even for the female. I told you it was sticky. <laughs> and um, well, the issue being of it's a form of expression, right? Versus just of being, it. have at it, yeah. Right, but at the same time, being professional. So if you are on a job site, um, and it's not clothing that you would normally wear on a job site, or that's not the best way, to put it, if it's not safe. Why are you wearing it? So I have no, I have no idea why a female would be in a bikini on a job site. It's not on job sites, no. It's right. like, but, and 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 that's where your point is. So has a female, or even has a man. It's the same thing. Has a guy who works out in the gym. He works out in the gym. He he might be like a top level instructor or whatnot. But you know, during night he you know dances in Chippendales. I don't know if that's the name of the thing. But anyway, he likes to show off his bod, his muscles and stuff. So he posts pictures of himself and you know topless. He's just showing what. That's his form of expression. He likes doing it and stuff. Um, yep. It's almost the same as the female. Has The female might decide, well, you know, during the week, I don't put makeup on. My hair is in a bun. I got a bandana on. You know, look, I just bought this awesome dress. Look at my body or, you know, or look at what I look like. It's a form of expression. Now, I don't think there's anything wrong, in my opinion. I do not think there's anything wrong if it's a form of expression. If it is in a way where the marketers 
case in point, because I got on my sister years ago with the, the girls toys versus the boys toys um, to the point where Target, I think Target and, and, and a bunch of them, they stopped calling toys boys and girls. You know, they just say, here's Legos or whatnot, um, because it was affecting the girls and the boys. Like, if girls are taught only to play with princesses and look pretty, then ultimately they're going to want to always look pretty. If boys yeah. are taught um, that they are only supposed to play with trucks and they can't, you know, play with dolls, it's something else. But if you just say, hey, they're toys, just do whatever you want, imaginate and stuff, then you have that form of expression. Um, but it's a touchy subject because... Um, and I'll, I'll give another case. On the Facebook page, one lady, she posted, and I was waiting for the responses on this one. She said she finally had a awesome day. She was out working. I think she was a welder, um, I believe. And so she said, I look good today. And she posted a picture of herself. And I saw it, and I was like, oh, I wonder how everybody's going to respond. Because she was on the job site. She was in her proper gear. Um, and she had, uh, she just said, I look sexy today. Look at me. And it was, for me, eye-opening, because I grew up in the era where, you know, you don't look like a woman, you know, just fit in like a guy. Mm -hmm. um, but here were women who were like, uh, the comments were, sometimes when I have a bad day or I know I'm going on a bad job, I put on makeup, you know, to make myself look pretty. Uh, other women were like, yeah, look at me. I look pretty. They were taking selfies of themselves looking really nice in their clothes, you know, whether yeah. it was a sexy or a beautiful thing. But to me, it was a form of expression. Now, yeah. if what you're talking about is where marketers are using that form of expression to say, oh, you should watch her because she's pretty, then I will be the first one down your ass to be like, what the? F <laughs> oh, no, I know marketers well enough that they don't do that. Right. They say I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna watch these people because everybody else is watching this person. Uh -huh. That's all they give a shit about. If right. I'm sitting here talking about dropping acid and shooting people, and it's getting a hundred million followers, right. dude, target Kmart. Blah, blah, let's just jump right. onto his bandwagon right now. So it's not even like the way that I think about it, and I I battle my mind with it when I watch some of these posts happen. It's like okay, for me to have a reaction either way, I think is ignorant. For me to think. Yeah, take your clothes off. I want to see more is like an ignorant way of thinking. But also for That's me to say, great. put your fucking right. But for me to think, <laughs> put your fucking clothes on. Like either way, it's me making a judgment about what I think that person should do with herself, her freedom to have that self-expression. So I think that for me, it's almost like I have to just not have a reaction and stop judging what I think about well, it. No, you can have a reaction, but does your comment, does it matter? Right, it doesn't. And it's... it's, it's <laughs> based on any action that I may take right. based on that opinion. And I don't take any action. I just don't and, comment. And, and I like, just likewise, up. it might be, does it matter given the context? If you're walking down the street or something and you've got your little five-year-old son with you and homegirl's got everything exposed and your son is gawking, do you just That's like walk away? for my son then. <laughs> It's a good day to have a discussion why we don't oogle women. I and, know. And, you know, but if it's just you and your guys are hanging out drinking beers and the same woman walks by, it's a different conversation and different oh, comment. Exactly. Yeah. It's so, like, like yeah. are sharks bad or are sharks evil if they eat a human? And it's like, no, dude. That's, that's what they a, do. That's a good day for a shark. It's just yeah. a shit day for the humans. So it's yeah. all relative. Yeah. And in that case, it's more, um, but again, that's. You can always, I, I'm not afraid to ask questions. So you can always ask the question of, you know, um, if if you see a female and she's wearing something and you're like, you know, hey, I'm just trying to understand, you know, why are you wearing this with your tools? And she might say, you know, leave me alone. I don't have to owe you an explanation. Or she might answer you. You know, it just depends. So um, I personally... It depends on my mood. One day I might come to work where I'm like got makeup on, nice and pretty. The next day I've got my bandana on and stuff. I'm still here to do a job. You know, um, like I said, my foreman, she can't go a day without getting her nails done. Like her nails have got to be perfectly polished and stuff. Um, it's just, you know, like I said, the form of expression of a lot of different people. And guys are the same way. You guys, like for me, I didn't grow up with guys with beards. <laughs> but there's this whole beard movement. <laughs> <laughs> and I see guys because the I'm military, military, there's no beards. So, I was too, and that's why I got this motherfucker. <laughs> right. The day I got out, I'm like, I'm growing it back. <laughs> yeah, so it's you know, I'm on a job site, and there's guys with the beards, and I'm like, oh my god, get that stuff out of your you know thing. But they're expressing themselves, and they have all different ways of doing that. So it's kind of like not 
an exact comparison, but almost kind of the same. Like we're not telling them you you have to wear your beard a particular way. It's got to be cut. Your hair has to be so. It's, you know, as long as the job gets done and it's safely done, and I think that's the key word. If me wearing booty shorts, but I've got a tool belt and I've got my safety vest on and I'm getting my job done safely, does it matter? That's a hell of a question to ask. I don't know. <laughs> it's all relative. You know, some people may not give a shit. Some some men may be able to w look at a woman working like that and not think sexual thoughts at all. And I think for probably a majority, probably will. It's just a, like a willpower but, but, and a maturity. Okay, and that's maybe the biggest thing. Your thought pattern and what your action is are two totally different things. You can be like, damn, I'd like to tab that, but you don't say that. Right, but I'd also <laughs> like to go to work and not feel like I have this constant thing around where I'm constantly having to think about a woman's body. Like you want the freedom to be treated equal on a job when you go and just be able to do work, and so do I. And I think if a woman comes and shows up as a worker there to do work, and putting off that vibe that I am here to do work just like you are here to do work, I think the mindfulness of the female should be I'm going to show up like that instead of – but see, there's the whole issue of like do women dress to impress men? Do women dress to express themselves? That right. men have no fucking clue, you know? I but mean it's, it's, the, it's the guy who wears – the black t-shirts that have every freaking curse word whatsoever or have like really gru gruesome images of skulls and skeletons. My, my middle son was like that. I mean, just nasty stuff. Yeah. And do you tell him, oh, take that off. It's offensive. It's it's, his, I mean, cause, his expression. Yeah. Right. So the female who um, comes on board and she decides I'm tired of wearing, you know, shirts that, that are all off of me. I'm a little skinny. Um, and I want to wear form fitting stuff now. And I'll be, I can go from my weight training days. I started weight training when I was like 16. So like there's sometimes where like, oh man, you know, my body's like awesome and I am not wearing no loose fit and shit because like my thighs look good. It is yeah. all about me. Like, you know, I'm yeah. looking at my biceps and stuff. So I could care less what you think about me on the job site because I'm there to do my job. But at the same time, I'm like, I've been working on my body and this is what I want to wear. And I'm just in that weight training mode. And, I, and so I kind of relate to the weight trainers, like when they want to flex and, and wear stuff. Um, but I mean, again, if you have a, I don't want to say that's your issue <laughs> of how you deal with it, but to then put it on, because it's still touchy because there's a lot of women who feel that women should dress a particular way on the job site. And I think that, I, I think that that is – that's not the way to, to address the problem. Um, yeah. I, I, and, <laughs> I think it's all relative, man. That's my whole point is that I don't think there is a right or a wrong. I think it's up to each one of us to act and be mindful and thoughtful. But you know, it's the same thing. If I were to show up – like this tattoo does not offend you. Mm -hmm. But if I were to show up – I don't even know what a, that is. What is that, a tarantula? It's, it's a spider. <laughs> it's a spider I drew actually. Is um, it mechanical? No, it's just lines. I, I'm i very, like, engineering-like in my lines. I do a lot of line oh, art. Um, okay. This thing's the same way. It's a, it's a squid, but it's all just full of lines. Um, oh, anyways, that's... but okay. so that that's to say, like, there is a line where I think people need to be cautious of their own self-expression because relative to the environment that they're in, it is on them that they're not being cautious. If I showed up to work with you one day with a swastika right here. Uh-huh. You would not be okay with most people wouldn't, but that's my expression. So it's like there's definitely a, a line we need to fucking draw there. I think we the can all agree. And, and here's the thing: the line doesn't need to be drawn by if you're in a a working environment. The line doesn't need to be drawn by the individual workers. Management is still involved sure. there. So if management says, "Okay, we don't want you know any facial piercings on the job site," yeah, then there's no facial piercing on the job site. If we don't want T-shirts that are offensive. Then yeah. there's no t-shirts on there. Um, if we want our t-shirt to be, uh, you know, to be in the middle of, you know, cover you that way, and they can provide a valid, safe reason, you know, um, to have it, then that, or you, you have to have, you know, your neck uh, totally covered, you know, um, for safety reasons. Then you could have that. Anything other than that, you know, work boots, things like that. I think that you're getting into. It's a personal issue, and you know, it's I like agree. I said, like for me, beards, eh, you know, but okay, you deal with it. Um, a girl comes on and she's very well endowed, and any any freaking t-shirt she puts on, you could tell. <laughs> right. 
there's nothing you can do about it other than get over it. You are all grown adults and stuff. And sooner and I know some guys are like, well, I think of you as my sister or my, you know, or the women think of you as a brother and go like that. You know, guys yeah. have sisters who are their friends. They are super hot. And you're like, oh, God, that's disgusting. You know? <laughs> um, yeah. Sometimes you get to think in terms like that and say we're all family and stuff when we're on the job site and things. So. Yeah, man, I think it's mindfulness and I think that it's mindfulness and thoughtfulness. Um, but I think it needs to be had by everybody. Um, just across the board, everybody. Oh, yeah, everybody, I, period. Not even just in the trades. Like, just more people need to be thoughtful. But right. I think I think from both sides of the aisle as well. I think that it's not necessarily just men who need to be mindful. I think there's a lot of issues, too, where women do. Probably more for men. I'll admit that. Um, but Well, I, just because, like I said, if 95% of your workforce is male, you're going to affect more change that way. So it is kind of up to... If, if the majority of your supervisors, your foreman, your superintendent are men, they really need to be on the forefront of creating that that welcoming environment on You're the right. job site. Yeah, um, that's where it's can, most effective. Yeah, you can have you can make females aware of like you know if you were even in Marine Corps, you know we had the little thing of like you know don't do this, don't cop out, you know saying that you had a, you know a period and you're you're crying over your your cramps when you have a job to do, you know <laughs> so um, even in in there giving a little instruction on how to go about your business and um there's other things saying you know and this is for the women do you want to learn or do you want to just be looked at and yes. so sometimes that's a decision that has to be made and there might be someone you know i got a master's and stuff i'm teaching other people well does it matter what i look like <laughs> so um because people are learning from me and i just give that case and stuff um and and like I said, it depends on the person um, on, on yeah. that matter and stuff. But I think I, that's the way for the women to think about it. Yeah, I deal with that on a on a pretty constant basis too. I've always got a hat backwards. I'm up here talking about electrical stuff. I throw f bombs out. I speak my piece and who I am pretty pretty openly. You know, uh -huh. I've got tattoos, so I. I also have people that approach me and they're like, hey, I'd really like it if you'd stop cussing so I can, you know, watch these videos with my five-year-old. And I'm like, why right. are you watching them with the five? You know, like, change the channel. I, I'm just going to be who I'm going to be. But I am very thoughtful about the the limit of which I do speak. You know, there's mm -hmm. some subjects that I just don't talk about and I choose not to because it does matter the environment that people are watching these things in and, and who's got access to them. You know, so there are just certain things that I use mindfulness on. That's what I would just like, uh, I think, to end this all on is that I think it is up to the individual. The way that you come you ha uh, to an environment and the way you project yourself, you have a lot more power and a lot more control than you think that you do. And right. you affect everything around. And I think that taking that more seriously, both from women knowing that you do have rights, you do have power and just speaking up and making people aware of the issues is really, really important. Mm -hmm. um, but men also, you know, creating a space, create a, an environment where people are thoughtful and that you're the person in charge of making sure that everybody's thoughtful and that you're creating right. a place. So mm -hmm. it's all across the board, man, mindfulness and thoughtfulness. Right. And in the end, you can just have a beer and call it a day. Yeah, yeah something okay. I mean, that's that's <laughs> oh, some things I think that we overthink, and we really don't have to. Uh, y you don't have to, I guess, rack your brain over it. It's like you know, have a beer, take you know, just sleep on it. And sometimes there are going to be some problems that just go unresolved, and you know, that's just how it is on that one. So it's like I don't, I don't wake up each day saying, "Ooh, how many problems am I going to solve?" I wake up each day saying, "Ooh, what am I going to do? It's going to be an awesome day. Let's go have fun." Yeah. Um, yeah. But actually, that that quote that just comes back to me, like it was out of MBA, was you know, how do we both get this done and enjoy the process? Yeah. There's something really unique in that question. Um, or another question that was asked is, um, you know, what if we changed everything? That's a different question to ask, you know, if, if we're on the job site, what if we changed everything? What would things look like? Maybe there's some new ways to introduce, you know, how we do our um, our introduction. When a person comes on the job site and we just hand them a t-shirt and a safety vest, is that really what we want them to think about the company as we're moving forward? Yeah. And then, um, or do we want to be a little thoughtful and ask them, hey, what do you want to learn out of this job? You know, what, are, what got you in the trade? Um, do you have family? You know, having an actual, you know, interview process there too. Yeah. 
<laughs> Dude, I, uh, I think that we can wrap this up. We're at um, an hour and 50 I minutes. I know. Why? We talk, we talk a lot. No, long I time. actually, like, I have, <laughs> I have to do. Um, I could talk to you for hours about this stuff. But thank you so much for uh -huh. enlightening me, like always, for being in the Discord group and actually being, like, a role model. I love future. Discord. I'm yeah, me too. <laughs> It's been really cool getting to know you, man. And uh, thank Likewise. you for the, for the lessons, the life lessons, the electrical lessons, all of it. So I'm going to drop some links below. If you wouldn't mind texting me the links to oh. some of the associations that you're a part of, uh -huh. as well as any like websites for your contracting company, anything that you want. Um, I'll well, put it in the I will push, like, I got to push Discord because I, I, I put so much crap on Discord. <laughs> need more people getting into Discord. So I'm trying to spread yeah. that like wildfire. Yeah, because I think that's like, I mean, just it's very organized to the point where people can go in and get that those nuggets of, of info yeah. and trying and um, if they're still not knowing they, they can ask the question and it, response rates are like what within five to ten hours somebody freaking responds so yeah. it's it's um and that's on the long side a lot of times yeah. five minutes <laughs> right five like seconds. it depends on who, who's online and stuff yeah. um so that that would be i haven't seen anything like that and i'm really like and I actually sent an invite today on that one. I figured out how to do the invites and sent it. So. Did you figure out how to make the link not expire? Yeah, did that, yeah did okay. it not expire. Because who knows when they'll get on there and stuff. Yeah. So. Well, cool. And hopefully right. we'll have more crossover events like this. Yeah, absolutely. I think we need to. But right. it was great to talk to you. Have a good day. And, All right. Uh, you too. See you later. All right. See you later.